So greetings, namaste. Uh, this is Kiera. It's June 13th, 2020. So we're here again for a tri-weekly meditation. We just finished a, a five-day retreat, a webinar yesterday, and I'm just, you know, so joyful to be in this kind of presence, even with being unable to physically travel. And so we'll continue doing that as long as we need to. So July, um, let me see if I can find the dates. July 4th and 5th, and then July 8th to 10th, and then July 24th and 25th will be the three levels of the deepening work for next month. So, um, yeah, what shall we talk about today? Um, a lot of people I know are struggling with illness. And so maybe we could say a little bit about that. Um, illness is not just for the physical body, of course. You know, all of us know that illness is psychosomatic. It's actually psychopneumosomatic. It's not just the body. It's also the emotional states. It's also the mental states. It's also our karmic uh, agendas. And if we are strong enough in our will, in our intention, all of that can be transformed. And it's about bringing into alignment what is our intention for this time with this body, personality, structure. And it's about, you know, is there a resistance or is there receptivity to these forces? Uh, so in the Inca work, we talk about hucha and sami, Hucha being the resistance and Sami being the flow, the receptivity, the movement of life force. So ultimately everything that we are doing is about opening to receptivity and flow. And so it's not just about illness as the absence of disease. It's about moving into greater uh, source of strength and wellness where we can be completely open and receptive to these forces of light. So uh, we don't even know what our bodies are capable of, but they're capable of far more than we think they are. So often uh, our challenges to health are simply a gateway to enter into deeper um, aspects of health that have not been explored before. So the homeopathic tradition um, is a good example of how things work on many, many different levels, very subtle levels, and how healing begins at these core levels. It's not about symptoms. We pay too much attention to symptoms. And symptoms are not the disease. And the cure for a symptom can actually drive the disease even deeper. So when I say disease or dis-ease, it's something that's out of flow, out of balance. Um, and if we can find what it is that's out of balance with our intention, with our awareness, and then simply will it back into balance, this can start the flow. If you start it early enough, when you begin to experience an illness, like say a flu or say something um, that affects the immune system, you can immediately, within minutes, <coughs> shift that um, tendency for illness. If it's taken hold of you, you can still continue to work with this flow. Just open the window connect with the light, the sami, bring it through you, feel it moving through every cell of the body. 
uh, notice where it wants to go to start working with the core issues um, wherever it is that's uh, that's out of balance on whichever level of consciousness and slowly you'll experience the transmutation of the hucha so sometimes we make too much of a distinction between a physical or emotional or mental or spiritual imbalance they're very connected and so the outer effects tend to be physical but to recognize that the physical is simply a densified light and if you enter deeply enough into the atoms or subatomic particles you're left with simply a movement of energy underneath that is the sami so you can access that sami as easily within the physical body as through the mental, emotional, or causal bodies. So this is important because we have a tendency to, um, in our physical paradigms, to think that um, we can maybe change something emotionally or mentally, but once it gets to the physical level, it's not so easy. Uh, if you're using Western medicine as a paradigm, that may be true. But if you're working with subtle energy fields, that's absolutely untrue, uh, as homeopathy demonstrates, as many other systems of medicine, as many of the shamanic traditions demonstrate. So we can learn how to activate that will. And then through <coughs> the combination of will and heart force, and by awakening the forces of prana, um, we can begin to heal deep-seated illnesses. And of course, there's you know times when this is not possible for whatever reason. Sometimes it's karmic. Sometimes it's a, it's a choice that a soul makes. Um, and we just allow that also to be part of the flow. So you're not resisting the flow no matter what we think should be the outcome. We're just allowing the soul frequency to align with the mental, emotional, physical, vibrational frequencies of all the different bodies working together, allowing the Sami to work through these different bodies, uh, and then the hucha starts to clear. So of course, it's, you know, it takes time, it takes practice, it takes awareness. But we can all do this. And then we emerge into a state of health that's more than the absence of disease. And um, this is the, the cutting edge of evolutionary transformation is. So what is the human body capable of? What is humanity as a species capable of? Um, it's a powerful exploration and in these times of crisis and stress many of us are now being called to enter this exploration simply as a means for deep for species survival and perhaps for personal survival so <clears throat> What are the limits to human endurance? What are the potentials that exist within us, within our DNA, within our divin divinity? And what does the next species emerging look like? So we can shape all this. We can shape all this through our beliefs. We can shape all this through our intentions. We can shape all this through the power of our souls, which is who we are. So, <clears throat> Actually, the soul is an aspect of who we are. It's a reflection of who we are within the physical form. Who we are is consciousness. And this is outside of time, space, creation, matter, energy, sucha and sami. It's that. Uh, there's no definitions. It's that presence. It's that beingness that has no qualities except simply 
awareness of being. <clears throat> So let's, uh, well, let me look at the chat room here. Okay, let me just quickly address this question from Tinika. Um, so when we are starting with the meditation, you tell us of the bubble extending two meters around. Why? I feel a larger environment. Sure, fine. Um, there's no fixed boundary. For many people, that's the starting point. But as you continue doing this work, your starting point may be much wider. And then you continue to extend it further and further. Um, Rob Potter. Hey. I'm in India right now. Good to see you. Good to hear you. We know each other from Mount Shasta. Yeah, so... <clears throat> The physical body is so strange and multidimensional. It's also so profound and beautiful. Um, if we can understand the magic and mystery of these bodies, um, the elemental energies, the nature spirits, the human elementals that work so tirelessly to maintain these bodies, to build and nourish these bodies on prana and light. Uh, we would never take these bodies for granted. So much, much of the healing journey is also about acknowledging their presence and the role that they play in our lives, encouraging this communication with them. So the human self, the elemental self and the angelic self can um, join forces on this journey. So if we only perceive ourselves as a human, we have lost touch with these powerful healing forces all around us. We've lost touch with the source of our physical well-being. So, just an announcement I want to make before we do the meditation. Uh, my friend David Shurjan and I started a, a podcast series. The first of these um, series will be aired next Wednesday. The trailer is, on, is up on my Facebook page now. Uh, so, the series is called The Age of Pandora. And we start with you know, simple questions um, like just who am I? What am I? Why am I? And we're looking at different aspects of our own self with each of those questions. So for instance, the who question has to do with, you know, that which we are beyond time and space. It's like that presence that we experience ourselves when we um, turn our gaze inwards. And the what question has to do with uh, the embodiment of this presence into time and space. So the soul, the spark of divinity that creates uh, subtle bodies to express itself through. And these subtle bodies then come into integration and self-awareness uh, so that we can recognize that which we are within creation. And then the why, what's, you know, that's our purpose, our individual purpose as human 
um, streams here on mission in a single incarnation what are we here to do so what is our purpose you know so the why questions could be deriving from that that all these questions um, come from and lead to different aspects of our being and so it's like awareness that there are these different aspects of being rather than simply clumping them together into one I and then not being really clear about what this I represents so it can be a very useful exercise to just do a practice where you investigate that question who am I or if, if you're working with a partner tell me who you are or tell me what you are or tell me why you are and noticing how it brings forward different aspects of the self um, and then once you become clear with that then you can work to align these three aspects together uh, this is three of many but these these are important ones that uh, we sometimes tend to um, confuse the soul and the spirit are not the same the spirit is the one self eternity in consciousness and then as that expresses within time and space uh, the soul is a creation um, through which the self can express itself um, in increments so the soul then creates various other bodies um, so that that divine force can be more fully expressed within a world of physical matter a personal structure personality mind thoughts feelings uh, ego all of this is um, a reflection of the soul that's designed to work very specifically within a world of matter and it's taken great effort to get to this point of our evolution so that we can actually do this so great honor to our mind to our ego to our personality structures so that we can actually interact with this world of time and space in physical matter um, it's easy to simply you know move our consciousness back to source um, that's not the reason we're here we're here to interact we're here to engage and we're here to be fully present in all dimensions of time in all dimensions of space which means also the physical body so if we become aware of that and then maintain a connection on all levels the hucha that we can define as the heart of illness can be released so so all right so let's do a quick meditation here where we can connect with the source and bring that source energy through all these different aspects of being so beginning with that bubble of light and as Chinika says it doesn't have to be confined to any particular size just see where your starting point is generally it's about two meters out beyond the physical body but it could be wider it could be uh, smaller uh, depending on your state of being at the moment so this is the boundary of the middle self your personal self and now we are intending to open up the door into the upper world and simultaneously into the lower world so there's a principle known as Aini reciprocity exchange where the moment energy moves in one direction there's a response in the other direction so the moment energy flows in from the sky there's a response from the earth 
and these two streams continue to work, move back and forth and back and forth, electrical and magnetic, electrical and magnetic. And we are electromagnetic beings and everything within our bodies are electromagnetic fields. So illness is a field, is a morphogenetic field, which can be overcome by creating a stronger morphogenetic field of wellness through intention, also through, through herbs, through um, energy practices. Uh, in allopathic medicine, this would be through various kinds of medications. In other forms of uh, healing, you're working directly with uh, other realms, subtle fields, um, accessing vibrational fields that can overcome the vibrational field of illness. So what we're doing now is we open to the upper world, become aware of that window, and this is about two meters above the top of your head. It's the doorway to the upper world. And now you're inviting a specific vibrational frequency that matches exactly the morphogenetic field of whatever disease or illness that you are experiencing now that you wish to release from your space. So it could be something physical, it could be something emotional or mental, it could be a soul sickness. And usually it's not just one or the other, it's a, a set of vibrational frequencies. And so we are inviting Sami that matches the set of vibrational frequencies. We allow that to enter through that window, bring it through our bodies, wherever it needs to go, in whichever body of creation. So the stream of directed light continues to move sky to earth <coughs> and then there's a response from the earth. This is magnetic force. Magnetic forces allow for healing to take place on a deep level. So when the body can ground itself into the magnetic stream of the earth healing is accelerated. Whether it's physical healing, like a broken bone, or internal organs that are out of balance, it could include diseases that have medical names, um, it could include emotional mental states, it could be karmic. So we just invite the magnetic forces from the earth to move up through the body and through the bubble in response to the electrical flow of very specific frequencies moving downwards. And this creates a magnetic field of healing and earth resonance where you feel held and supported by the mother in all things. You enter into that flow, surrender and trust and allow for those healing forces much stronger than what we experience through the rational mind 
to move through us. So all we're doing as we open these doors between worlds is inviting these forces beyond our own, intelligences beyond our own, to move through, to circulate, and to bring into balance through awareness. So wellness is a natural state. It's a state of flow. And from the state, it is possible to experience deep trust, where we can surrender to the flows of life in a state of receptivity and wonder. Fear creates resistance and trust dispels fear. Fear is a vibration that keeps us from receiving that flow. And as we release into trust, we open to a vibrational field which has its own intelligence, its own purpose, its own power. So we'll just remain in this <clears throat> space for a few minutes. Blessings and love.